My Vision Board. Tacos, Kerouac, and Ryan Gosling. Presented by Stilla Frog. So I decided to make a vision board. You know what that is, right? You basically take a piece of poster board or cardboard or whatever you have available, and you print out photos and cut stuff from magazines, and you glue it all down to this board, and then you place the board somewhere you're sure to at least catch a glimpse of it every day. And in this way, you're supposed to stay focused on your dreams and goals to the point where you may even manifest this shit in real life. Now, I'm not sure if I believe in it exactly, the manifesting stuff. Like, let's say I were to sit on the floor, lotus style or whatever right now, and for the next 15 minutes, I think really hard about a million dollars just coming to me. Do I honestly think that in the next day or so, a million dollars will somehow materialize? Probably not. I'm not saying that wouldn't be nice. I'm just not holding my breath. My sister, on the other hand, truly does believe in the power of manifestation and the law of attraction and all of that. I posed my million-dollar scenario to her, and she explained that she'd done something similar. She concentrated by not concentrating, because apparently that's how the law of attraction works. You don't think about the thing you want in order to get it, or whatever. Anyway, she said that after meditating and not thinking about all this money, the very next day she won $10 on a scratch-off. And I'm like, $10, you say? And she's ecstatic, talking about how this stuff really does work. And I say, you realize $10 can't even buy a whole pizza? And she's like, well, that's not the point. So I say, well, what is the point? And she got mad and hung up the phone. But I am going to give this vision board thing a try. What's the worst that can happen? I put, like, a mansion by the ocean on my board, and the next day someone comes by and says, congratulations, you've just won a she shed down by a creek. (laughs) This particular vision board, however, is going to be about love. Because at the current moment, there is a resounding lack of it in my life. My mother says I'm too picky. My sister says I need to set my sights a bit lower, like wishing for $10 instead of a million bucks. I didn't actually say that, though. But why should I aim lower? Why can't I be picky? Why should I opt to settle for some guy I can't stand and be miserable all my life? I'd rather remain single. So on this vision board, I decide to put men who I think are good looking. Let's see. I have Ryan Reynolds, Brad Pitt, Zac Efron, Christian Bale. And then my sister's like, what about Tom Cruise? He's pretty hot. And I'm like, seriously? I'm just not into the whole Tom Cruise vibe, I say. And she says, Well, you're missing out then. And I say, make your own damn vision board, why don't you? I've also put key words on my board. These are words that when I see them, they inspire that feeling of love in me. Words like, well, love. And then there's romance. I have lust, passion, laughter. Yes, I do want a man who can make me laugh. Um, I have sex on there because, you know, that's important too. I have the words candlelight, flowers, and tacos. And again, my nosy-ass sister is like, tacos? Why the hell is the word tacos on your vision board of love? And I tell her, I say, the best date I ever went on, I mean, the absolute best, was a few years ago, and we had tacos. So at that time, I was living in a tiny two-bedroom apartment in the city with like three other girls, and I basically was selling off my worldly belongings on eBay just to make ends meet. So anyway, I was at the bookstore browsing one afternoon, because of course I couldn't afford to buy anything, when this guy stops me and says, Whoa, you're a Kerouac fan too. And uh, yes, I could tell he was just trying to hit on me. But it was still flattering. And what else did I have to do but go back to a cramped apartment with three women all fighting for bathroom time? So I played along. Except after a while, it wasn't playing along. I mean, he was amazing. And he honestly did know something about not just Kerouac, but also Ginsburg and Burroughs and a lot of the other beat writers. We eventually left the bookstore. He even bought me a copy of Dharma Bums, and then we just walked and talked some more, and I'd never felt quite that comfortable with a man, particularly a man I'd just met. And then, of course, it started getting dark, close to dinner time, and he asked if he could buy me a taco. So we found this super authentic Mexican place, and it was honestly the best taco I'd ever eaten in my entire life, to the point that where I came to associate tacos with, like, the most incredible day ever. So. Why not just go after that guy, my sister says to me. Because that was like three years ago. We never went on another date, I tell her. Why the hell not, she asks. That's just ridiculous. It doesn't make any sense. 
she explains. It's stupid. If this was the best date and the greatest guy and the most amazing taco, then you should have done something about it. Well, I say, that is a good point. What I didn't tell her was that he did text. Then I texted back, and we did that for a while, but just never got together again because, I guess, well, life intervened and gradually the texts just stopped. I suppose because it was just meant to be that one date and that one bookstore and that one taco. And the magic was never intended to exist beyond that moment. But now I'm kicking myself because, damn, why didn't I do something about it? What the hell was I thinking? So I decided to start my vision board all over. And so here is where I am with it now. Don't tell my sister. I have tacos, of course. There are some beat poets on there. A front piece from On the Road by Kerouac. Pictures of a bookstore and a Mexican restaurant. Oh, and a straw wrapper. Because he'd done this corny but sweet thing where he tied a straw wrapper into a few knots and said, A flower for you. It was romantic as hell at the time. There's also a photo of Ryan Gosling because he kind of resembled Ryan Gosling when he did the notebook. You know, that scruffy and rough but tender look, too? And I printed out the letters R-O-B. That's his name. The letters are all different fonts and colors, and actually, now that I look at it, it looks a tad serial killer-ish. Oh, well, that's my vision board as it stands currently. I will focus not focus on finding him in the hopes that one day he does, in fact, magically reach out to me. Why don't I just text him? You're probably wondering. Or even, dare I, call him? Because I guess at heart, I really do believe that some things just happen when they're supposed to happen. And people come into your life when they're supposed to come into your life. And you can manifest what you want if you don't think about it hard enough. And, oh, I can no longer find his number. There's that, too. Uh -huh.